Good morning there ladies and germs. So today we are starting in on a new project on the channel. And it's basically going to be an idiot's guide to assembling a relatively stock LS engine. So in this particular case, our example is a about 2005-ish LQ4 that we're going to be making into an LQ9. Um, so I just want to kind of show the super basic steps to putting an LS motor together. And I think the way we're going to structure this is it's going to be short videos where we're going to do each task at a time. So a video that's maybe less than five minutes. Um, uh, obviously our first step to this guy is putting the crank back in it. Um, like I said, this engine is predominantly stock parts. So that's how we're going to go over the assembly. Um, stock crank, no machining, stock bearings. So I'm not going to show how to check clearances. Um, pretty basic stuff, like I said. So I think I'm going to gather up some supplies and uh, this block just came back from the machine shop and I can tell that they washed it. I do want to make sure that the oil galley is completely clean. If there's any filth left in the oil galley, it's going to shoot it straight into your main bearings and you don't want that. So let me get some stuff together and uh, we'll get started on video one. I'm hoping to keep the rambling to a minimum, but since this is the first video of the series, there may be a little bit of extra rambling. So let's get to it. Come here, pal. Dexter doesn't like the air nozzle at all. All right, we got all of our parts cleaned up and kind of prepped. Um, went through the bearings. Like I said, we're reusing the stock GM bearings. They only had like 10 hours on them. It doesn't really matter where these bearings go as far as one through five. Well, number three goes where number three goes. This is your thrust bearing. But we did mark these. The other hole goes right there. Yeah, these are set by the locator in the bearing. So you can only put them in one way. They have to go that way. Okay, grab bearing number two. Did you already inhale the duck chimkin? Four, five. The caps have their respective bearings in them already. We never took them out, we just cleaned them in place. We've been using this stuff a lot lately. There's a million different assembly fluids out there you can use. You've got mail. Yeah. Now we're gonna inspect the crank for dog hair. Do not drop. Okay. Now we're ready to set the caps in place after we oil those up. spend on this? Um, 18 bucks? They made a fix for it one just like it. Horrible fright. So this is pretty much. Two.
See, Google is so fast. It tells us that the number five main bearing cap goes backwards to the rest of them. These are all marked from the factory. One, two, three, four, and then five gets flipped around. So the five is over here. That is correct. That's how it's supposed to be. Now we're going to uh, put a little bit of 40 weight on the bolts. These are stretch bolts and we will stretch them when it's time to stretch them. So, but we'll use our little quarter drive guy to run them in quickly and efficiently. these with the baby impact. I don't know how important it is to do the thrust bearing with the old flat bladed screwdriver on an LS motor. That may be completely unnecessary. Make sure before you keep going that you don't have anything binding. Still feel good. It looks good. So before we go to torque these, I gotta go around and kind of wipe them off get some of the oil off of there so that we can put some reference marks on there because we don't have the fancy uh, angle finder torque wrench here we only have a dumb old clicker torque wrench here so I'll do that and then uh, we'll revisit stretching these things down okay so following our handy dandy summit racing gen 3 iron block torque spec sheet that you can print off the intrawebs everybody has access to it main caps per uh, first pass is 15 foot pounds or 180 inch pounds on both the inners and the outers so all of these guys are 15 foot pounds we went ahead and used our cheapo o'reilly's torque wrench performance tool works just fine Got all those done to 15 foot pounds. No real pattern to it. I just start in the middle and work my way out. So now we're ready to do the stretch. So we will do the inners first and they're gonna get stretched to 80 degrees from where they landed at 15 inch pounds or 15 foot pounds, excuse me. And we elected not to do the marking we are going to try the cell phone trick. I think Isaac told me about this once before and I had forgotten about it. And then he just brought it up and again. And I could see this actually working. So what did I say? 80 degrees? 80 degrees. Sorry for all of you guys are probably getting seasick running back and forth. So 80 degrees on these guys. And then 51 degrees, like one degree makes that big a difference on the outers. The outers have a stud because they hold the windage tray. What I do think I will do is grab a Sharpie so that we can at least mark the cap to uh, notate the ones that we've stretched. It's always a good idea. So I think we're going to start right here. We need the 13 millimeter. We gotta get that plugged on there without. We, <laughs> we literally packing taped Isaac's phone to the breaker bar. So let's go on this one, bud. So we'll just have to do 85. Okay. I'm gonna have to hold this guy. Okay, go for it.
you want to try not to stop during your pull, especially towards the end. Okay, that's nice. Now we'll reset. So we're starting at 30? Yeah, just without losing 30 plus. At 110. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So that's the only goofy part I'm seeing so far on you. You got to do a little math if you're going to use the phone trick. Unless somebody knows of a way to reset this thing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run through all of these and then we'll regroup. So we successfully did our angle torque on the inners and outers. So these were, what'd we say? 80 and 51. And then you can see we've got a Sharpie mark next to every one of them so we didn't double twist one. Because it, as far as I know, it will snap off if you try and do that. Now we're gonna put in the uh, little side bolts that go into the caps. Um, I like to put those with just a little dab of any kind of silicone uh, that you see appropriate. In this case, I'm using high temp because it's what it was first grabbed. Um, so we'll put just a little film on the head because you don't want these things weeping over the long term. The torque on these little guys is uh, 18 foot-pounds or 216 inch-pounds and no no real sequence you can just put them in and tighten them down and I'm sure a lot of guys just jam them in with the little baby impact and don't even worry about it I wouldn't consider yourself a hack if you did that Never recommend using the dried booger of RTV. Cheap torque wrenches, it's hard to feel the click sometimes, so if you question it. And you can feel it, but you can't really hear it, which is a lot of complaints about these performance tool torque wrenches and not being able to hear the click. Especially if the radio's on. So we'll run around, get those all torqued up, 216 inch pounds or 18 foot-pounds and uh, that'll pretty much conclude this segment of uh, step one of your LS build and putting the crank in we're still nice and free so like I said stay tuned for the second one where we build the rods and pistons this engine has floating pins so it's easy to do um, we'll uh, show putting the pistons in the bores and putting the caps together for the big end of the rods and torquing that stuff up. We'll see you on the next one.